cats and kittens. It's Bob Ross here and I want to do a little painting with you. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this paint. It's a Dixie Belle and see I, paint, I made some happy skies and stuff and so I'm going to make this, it's kind of like a smiley face right here. You just want to take it you know, nice and easy, okay? And it's like a half moon. And now this is kind of looking like a football. Okay, that's not what you want. But anyways, the next step is to take this dark color and just put some dots on here. There you go, little dots, little dabba do ya. And then what you want to do is you want to take this, this green color here and you want to make some lettuce. Okay, a little bit of lettuce. What you got here is a taco. That's a taco, okay? You wanna take your taco shirt, you wanna take your tortilla blanket, wrap yourself around, wrap yourself in here, and get ready for 10 Minute Tuesday on Cinco de Mayo. Welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. Hey everybody, it's Crystal and welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. So I hope you enjoyed my painting here that Bob did. And I am going to go ahead and put 10 minutes on the clock. Happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way. I mean, I know that we're all kind of in quarantine, but I don't know, make some tacos, make yourself a margarita or whatever. Stay away from tequila. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna start the timer. Boom, done. Okay, so this week I have a lot of questions and I'm gonna try to get through as much as I can. So, I have a couple questions here. One is, is it easier to hand sand or use a electric sander when you're sanding in between coats? So no matter what brand you're using, for me I'm a creature of habit. So even if I'm using a Dixie Belle brand of a top coat, I sand in between my top coats just because I've always done that and that's just what I do. Now it depends. If it's a small little table, I'll just take a little sanding pad, quick scuff, clean it off with my hand. Now, I am a woodworker and I used to build tables. So if I was doing that on like a big farmhouse table, I would use an electric sander. So I just try to think of what's more efficient. And so I guess for you, you just have to think what's more efficient because it only needs a little scuff. You don't need to get crazy and if you're not super familiar with an electric sander and putting the right amount of pressure, it's better to use your hand because you don't wanna blow through that top coat that you just did. So, another question was, what's my best practice for glazing? So, when I'm using, let's say Dixie Bell's glazes are water-based, I mist down my area first and then I actually put my glaze on with a paintbrush and that helps it be more smooth. Glazes sometimes to me are kind of like the stepbrother of a metallic paint. They, the open time is not as well and it's kind of a sticky paint, if that even makes sense. So I keep a damp brush and I keep a mister bottle and that way the, as long as it's water-based, you can help it move a little bit more. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, also with glaze, I top coat and then I glaze because that also will help it move a little bit more. And if it's water-based and you don't like it and you test it on an area, if you get it off fast enough, then it's not as big of a deal. So, okay. So I had a question about shipping pieces. So right now I live in Germany, so I don't ship pieces in Europe because that's just a whole crazy thing that I don't wanna deal with. I'm, I, instead of bordering another state, I border another country, which has a whole another set of rules. So in the States, what you can do is if you want to take your business to the next level or you wanna ship, there are groups out there. I don't wanna say support groups, but there's furniture groups out there. There's a, the Inspired Artisan Community and a lot of those artists ship. Now you can find out good shippers by word of mouth or there is you ship in the States and you can put your stuff in there and you can also look at their ratings as well. So it's just hit or miss. And there are a lot of my artist friends who don't or can't use the same person all the time. So if that person's not coming to California and you have a client who wants their stuff in the next month, well, then you're gonna have to find a different way. So generally what happens is, is when you're shipping furniture, 
you will, let's say you've got five pieces that are going five different places. So you'll talk to a shipper and say, hey, I've got five pieces that needs to go here, here, and here, and here. And they say, okay, I'll be there in two weeks and I can take all your stuff. So it's kind of like um, a collaborative thing. It's not, oh, I got a piece. Okay, I'm gonna ship it out today. Oh, I got a piece. I'm gonna ship it out today. It's more feasible for you to kind of have a client who understands, hey, it'll be there in three weeks because my shipper's coming in two weeks and you know, so it's like easier to do it in one trip versus doing multiple trips. And that will generally be cheaper on you. And, but then let's say that you don't have a piece and you haven't sold the piece in forever and you've got someone that wants it tomorrow, but your shipper isn't coming until three weeks from then. You may have to go on you ship and find somebody. So hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of, I don't know, shipping is, it, once you get it down, it's not that bad, but at first it's, it's a learning curve and unless you're willing to learn, make sure you always get insurance or that your shipper has insurance, but I digress. So another question I got was no pain gel stain on Formica. Okay, so my Formica is not going to stain and you could scuff sand it and put no pain gel stain on, but to me personally, I feel like putting paint on it is just the same thing. You could put paint on it a dark paint and you could even make faux wood grain on it. And so when you're putting no paint gel stain on Formica, you're really just painting it on there anyway. So why not just use paint? The paint is going to dry faster because it's not oil based and you'll be able to top coat it better. And so for me, I would just use paint. If I'm going to do a top like that, instead of using no paint gel stain as is that, then I just use paint. Okay. No. So how do I care for my brushes? Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm not that great at it. I've gotten better, I've gotten better. So normally what I do after I am done painting is I go and at least rinse out my brush really well. Then depending on what kind of brush you're using, if you're using a synthetic brush, whether it be Dixie Belle, Klingon, something like that, you can set it in a cup of water. So you don't want it to go over, so you just want the bristles to be in there. So what's gonna happen is when you set that synthetic brush in the water, it's gonna pull the paint out, and if you let it sit for like an hour, so you can rinse it out, right? You can rinse it out and the water will be clear, but you put it in a, in a cup and you'll come back and there will be paint pulled out. So that's a really good practice for your synthetic brushes is to kind of set them in a cup of paint. Don't go over the rim of there because it's metal and it may it, you don't want to rust it. So just set the bristles, just the bristles in there and just let them sit and then rinse it out again. And that's a really good practice. Now, if you have dried paint or something like that, or even like wax, if you're using a wax brush, I really like scrubby soap. So scrubby soap is, it's a natural soap and it's got essential oils in it. And I just, I really, really like it. It's got a little scrubby thing inside of it. So it helps. So let's say, pretend like this is your brush. Like this is the arm of your brush and these are your bristles. I take my scrubby soap and go down with it. Okay. I don't get crazy and do this like I'm washing my hair because you could mess the bristles up. So just kind of brush with the brush or brush with the bristles. So I do that. And then I also had a question about repairs on pieces. So again, I'm a woodworker. So it was like, how strict are you on pieces that need fixing? For me personally, I'm not as strict. It just depends on how much time I wanna put into it. But for you, depending on, it depends. Are you gonna be able to sell it and get as much money out of it as the work that you put into it? Whether you are mechanically inclined or not, or whether you are a woodworker. Are you gonna put hours and days into it and only get you know, a small profit? Is it worth it to you? That's what you have to think. Now, a lot of people, they have their significant other fix things. Like if a mirror's broken, they'll take it to somebody and have the mirror cut. So those are all things you have to think about. At the end of the day, what you have to think about is the cost that you have in the furniture at the, at the very end of everything. How much, how many hours did it take you to repair it? You know, if you've got to take it to get it cut, how much did that cost you to get that mirror cut? How much did it cost you to pay someone to fix the drawer glides? How much were the drawer glides? Um, you know, how much was it to get a brand new top or to buy wood to replace the top? You know, you gotta think about how much money are you putting into a piece and is it worth it? 
So if it's for yourself, maybe not so bad. But if it's for a resale, you always have to think. Always have your business hat on and think about the profit. How much profit are you gonna get from this piece that you brought home? I also had someone ask me, do you always use a damp brush when you're painting? Yes and no. Okay, so that question is, I do if I remember, okay? So if I remember to damp my brush, but if I sit down to my dresser and my damp, my brush isn't damped, dampened, dampened, um, <laughs> my brush isn't dampened, then I will spray down either my brush with my mister bottle or if I'd already dipped it in the paint and I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have a damp brush, then I would mist over the piece of furniture and help it glide more. So, you know, it's not end all be all if you sit down and your brush isn't damp, but it'll help the, the paint glide better. And that is slime. Where are we? Oh, stop. 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 Oh my gosh. Ah! I swear this thing never wants to turn off. Anyways, guys, that was 10 Minute Tuesday. I hope you learned something awesome. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or message me if you're not comfortable putting them in the comments below. I look forward to these every Tuesday and I cannot wait to see you guys next Tuesday. Have an awesome, awesome week and I will see you later. Bye.